All right, folks, mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get this afternoon session going here. Um, we have a wonderful gentleman from Statistics Canada who's going to come and speak to us. Hold on, I had it on my little phone here. Um, this topic for the next one is exploring the potential of open data using an open project approach. So let's give a nice warm round of applause to Alessandro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. And thank to all the colleagues of uh, TBS who organized this. It's really a pleasure to be here. Okay, let me try this way. Um, so again, my name is Alessandro Alasia. I'm the chief of uh, the, the Data Exploration and Integration Lab at Statistics Canada. Uh, we are in the Center for Special Business Project. We are a small team of dedicated analysts, economists, sociologists, and geographers, some of them. This is just to say that I think none of us has a computer science background. So we are, we are uh, I, I should say the team is really a, a group of dedicated self-learner, problem solver, and we do projects for different departments. We are, every year we have about 20 projects. And uh, a couple of years ago, we started an interesting project that was uh, an eye-opener in uh, on the on the on the domain of open data and open source tool. So I'm going to tell you uh, the story of our experience and how we moved from uh, one project to to this idea of uh, open projects. Um, so the. the the context. Uh, Stats Canada has an history of working with open data and of course we produce a lot of open data. Uh, pretty much everything that we produce is on CanSim or now the new uh, dissemination uh, platform and, uh, and, and it's open accessible to every, everybody. Uh, however, the, 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 the the data ecosystem is changing, it's not something new, and national statistical offices are increasingly becoming consumers and st stakeholders of open microdata. So what I'm going to talk uh, here today about open data uh, is, is really open microdata from uh, authoritative sources mainly, uh, and, and I will explain uh, in a second what I mean by that. Uh, and the point is that there are a lot of new producers of open microdata, and this is a new, very interesting uh, space that we start to explore with these projects. Um, so crowdsourcing, the, the crowdsourcing pilot project, I'm going to briefly mention that and show you what we did for that in terms of open application. Uh, that was really the first step in exploring uh, this open data, open tool, um, open code, open project uh, domain. And then we want to explore more and see more. And, 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 and so we move to this idea of own, an open project. Next slide. There are, there are really two major take home messages which I would like to convey to you. And I like to say that upfront so that you keep them in, my, uh, in mind as I go through the presentation. Uh, the first one is that there's really a great potential for integration and use of open microdata from municipal, provincial, federal government sources. And that's really what I'm going to show you here and a couple of small examples of that. Uh, and then there is a, a great potential, potential for conducting this work in an open space and with, with the idea of an open project. And, and I really relate to a lot of the, of the discussion that was done here this morning, the panel, and I'll get back to some of this point and the challenge that we faced. So those are the key messages of my presentation, but let's go to the example. So I'm going to talk to you about a briefly crowdsourcing pro pilot project, very briefly what we did, and I'll show you the application, the open uh, source tool that we developed for that. Uh, and then uh, the next step in our uh, exploration will start to work with the uh, open microdata from government source. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of these. And then um, show, I'm going to show you what we did in terms of uh, an open pro a couple of open projects, a couple of examples, uh, and collaborative data creation. This is a really a new uh, area that we, we hope to explore uh, with, with many stakeholders. Okay, the, the, the crowdsourcing pilot project first. Uh, we started this project in 2016 and completed the project at the beginning of this year, in March 2018. Uh, we have a report now, uh, it's, it's, it has been sent to translation as a 15-page uh, report that summarizes all the lessons learned and all the experience of this project. I think uh, uh, 
uh, it might be interesting to many of you who want to know more about the project and crowdsourcing and this crowdsourcing experience. Um, in brief, what we did is to use OpenStreetMap as a collaborative platform uh, to collect data on buildings. Uh, there is a long story behind this, why, why we started collecting data about, uh, about building. There are major initiatives at Stats Canada about developing a national register of buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Here, the, the purpose of the project were re was really uh, explore the use of crowdsourcing for the purposes of a statistical process. So can the data that we crowdsource be used in some form within a, a, a process of uh, production of national statistics. That was the idea. Um, we built uh, some application, an open source editor and a mobile app. I'm going to show you that in a, very quickly in a second. And then uh, the, proce the project was generally a success, was considered quite a success. We managed to map uh, the, the pilot project area, which was Ottawa Gatineau within four months. And the reason of that success was the great collaboration we had with, with the municipality and the local OSM community. There are some local uh, OSM mapper here. They were really helpful in, in helping us. And many of them really did the large bulk of the work because they imported the open municipal data that were made available by Ottawa and Gatineau. So really a great collaboration for us and really an eye opener on the potential of using municipal open data. So if you go to the next, uh, uh, just to give you a sense of what we did, we really tried to, div again, we were using an open uh, platform, OSM, OpenStreetMap. How many of you are familiar with OSM? Eh, quite a lot. It's a kind of, uh, it's, it looks like a bit Google Map, but works with the same principle of Wikipedia. You create an account and then you can edit the map and then you can track, uh, keep, keep, uh, track of all the edits that have been done to the map. Uh, now, again, we, we use the open uh, platform and we try, and, and that was really the first exploration for us with open source uh, application calls and tools. So we create a GitHub account and, and develop uh, a number of applications which you will find on our GitHub account. So if you switch to the first page um, and you open, the GitHub account. Well, if you are curious, you can actually use the, the, the application, which is now running from off the, the GitHub account. So here, there is a URL. If you want to use your cell phone and, and try it, and uh, okay, <laughs> the person moved very quickly to the application. Uh, I don't know if you had the time to, to, to look at that and open that. Uh, you, you need to have a, uh, an OSM account, but you can log in with the uh, Gmail account or Facebook, other social media account. Uh, the application, again, is completely uh, done with open source uh, um, components. Uh, I didn't develop uh, the app, so I don't know all the technical details, but it's completely open source. You would find the code on the GitHub account. In fact, it was reused by a group uh, uh, of uh, academics and researchers at the University of Rome uh, who were uh, willing to, who were interested in developing a similar application for their data collection. So they, they clone uh, our repository and they adapt it for their own use. Uh, the way it works is that if you zoom in, if you just zoom in, yeah, just zoom further. You actually need to, can I just come here? Yep. Okay, let me just show you very quickly how it works. There you go. Okay. Just uh, actually, you can click here, and then uh, if you allow the geolocation, there you go. That's right. We are right here in this building. Um, so what you can do now is zoom in a little bit closer and then select a building. It takes a few seconds, and then you would see the address appearing at the bottom, and then you can choose to edit, and then you can enter the address, the type of building, a few attributes, and then save it. I'm not going to do any change now, but uh, you are welcome to do that on, uh, on the building that you know and complete the map. What you can also do is to add point of interest, so we add an option for 
adding point of interest so that if you know that there is a nice coffee shop here, you can add a point and then edit, edit the point and select the characteristic. Uh, is this uh, an amenity? Is this, uh, whoopsie, is this a shop? And if you select a shop, you can choose from the many tags that you would find in OSM. And then save uh, this. Now, if we go back to the presentation, again, you can play this. It's working. And you can actually clone it and use it for your own purposes. And of course, my colleagues, uh, friends from the OSM community would probably say, be cautious if you do that, because the information actually goes to the OSM platform. So make sure that you enter good, uh, good data, good information, uh, accurate information. Now, that was the first uh, exploration with open source tool. It was actually quite successful. Again, we managed to map all the uh, Ottawa Gatineau area in about four months. Uh, also, that was, a, that was a, a really a sort of a groundbreaking project because it, it showed the potential and the power of crowdsourcing data. And uh, it was a completely new thing for Stats Canada, but you know, other group and other divisions started to, to, to say, okay, maybe we can use it. And we did use it. How much does a gram of wheat cost in Ontario? Well, well, we don't know, but we actually now can find out. Thanks to, if you go to the next slide, to a crowdsourcing application that we developed at Stats Canada. And this one also got a lot of attention. So the idea of crowdsourcing really is becoming uh, not, not mainstream, but you know, a possibility for data collection at Stats Canada. Uh, again, uh, you can click on the Stat Cannabis demo. If you go on the main page of Statistics Canada, you have the Stat Canada, uh, the Cannabis Hub, and then on your left, uh, sorry, on your right, you would find uh, uh, a place to click, and that would bring you to this page. The, stat cannabis, uh, the, the, the crowdsourcing application for the collection of uh, price from the black market. So uh, as you know, in a couple of weeks, uh, marijuana will be legalized. Uh, but of course, as, as that's kind of, we have the challenge of uh, putting together information on, on this new industry. And one of the information that we needed was the price of the black market. And we need to have that information before legalization. So what were, uh, were the options to collect this information? Well, one option was crowdsourcing, so we explored this option. Now, in this case, the big difference with the previous application is that the entire application was developed on a Stat Canada IT infrastructure, so the, the data is collected uh, on the Stat Canada IT infrastructure. But you can submit information, of course, you don't have to do it now. I don't want to embarrass anybody. You know, if you know the price of, uh, of the cannabis in the black market, uh, you, know, you might do that uh, maybe later on tonight. Uh, but the, the, the interesting aspect here is that you can also download all the data that were submitted. So again, crowdsourcing open data. All the, all the single um, data points that were entered can be downloaded, and you can judge for yourself about data quality and, and make the analysis and do the analysis that you want. So that was quite a groundbreaking uh, approach also in this case of collecting through crowdsourcing and then sharing uh, the entire database that is collected. Okay, close this small parenthesis on the, on the crowdsourcing. My point is, and back to the presentation, that was an eye-opener because we realized the potential of working with um, um, next slide. Open microdata from government sources. So we start to see, we start to, to look around and see, oh wow, there are a lot of municipality with, with uh, open uh, data portal and the number is growing by the month and they're putting out a lot of information. And a lot of them is aggregate information, the budget of the municipality. A lot of them is actually microdata, is data on addresses, on building, on properties, property value, tons and millions and millions of data points. So we started to look at that and explore the potential of this domain and, and come up with this idea of, uh, you know, let's work in the open space. Next slide. So we develop an experimental database uh, of building 
And then, of course, this was the, 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 the perfect uh, sequel to the, the crowdsourcing. And we kept focusing on building. We started to download all the um, building footprint from municipal open data sources. And the ODB is now ready, and we hope to, really, to, to share it soon. If you go to the next slide, uh, there are 62 government data set. Uh, the database right now is 4.3 million footprints and counting, so because there are new data set every month. And it's 100% pure Canadian open microdata. And so you have the happy beaver. Unfortunately, the, the picture didn't turn out quite, uh, quite clear. But again, those are, uh, what all we did is compile the data, standardize, harmonize the various definition, and bring it together in a single comprehensive database of 4.3 million uh, uh, footprint. Uh, we did some cleanup, uh, minor correction. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, Again, uh, open data with an open license means that everybody can access the use of the and use the information. Next slide. So this is the coverage of the ODB uh, as it stands now. Um, there are eight provinces or territory that are covered, covered 40 CMA, CA. So it's, of course, it's mainly major urban areas, but there are also rural municipalities. There's Muskoka, Huron County, and we start to develop a, a map and, and look at the coverage in terms of uh, the relationship between building and population. Of course, it's in, we don't have a, a benchmark as Stats Canada. We don't have building footprint. We don't have that information. So uh, the only way to try to um, generate a sense of completeness it was to compare to the population of the area. So we realized that when there was a ratio uh, three people per building, three to five, on, you know, the area, the area has a, uh, almost a full coverage. And you can say, uh, but then of course it depends on the settlement type, a rural area duration is higher, urban area, uh, actually urban area duration is higher, rural might be a little bit lower. But anyway, that's the range, and we start to get an understanding of the, of the coverage. So as you can see, there are areas that are uh, in dark, uh, dark uh, sort of blue or purple uh, that have very good coverage. I mean, they're... Uh, less than three people per building, so that th those are areas for which you probably have 100% coverage, and then area with less coverage. So, next, so again, next, uh, next slide. This is to give you a sense of the database that is, as it is now. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, Richmond Hill in Toronto. What we could understand is the quality seems to be very high. Again, we don't have a benchmark. We did some random check, check with uh, satellite imagery, and, and, uh, and do some, uh, some quality check, spot quality check. Uh, the, the, the structure of the database is the one that you see here. So we basically condense the information that you can find uh, at the municipal level in very few variables, essentially geopositioning and, and, uh, and uh, size of the, the building in terms of, of the footprint, in terms of the area. Um, again, we hope to make the data available, uh, database available very soon and on a web page uh, at Stats Canada. But there is a very interesting new development that I'm going to mention uh, in a second. But going to the next slide. Okay, so from, from there, from that, that experience of starting to compile the, um, the database, downloading the, the municipal open database and compiling them and working uh, in, ha well, in our office and recompiling the information, we moved to the idea of uh, okay, open project and collaborative data creation. Can we go a step further and move uh, even further, not just downloading the municipal open data, but also uh, develop the idea of an open project and a collaborative data creation? I think so, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples with the application that we develop. And it's, again, work in progress, early stage, but I think this really shows the potential that, that this, this domain has. So let's move to the next slide. So again, the idea of open project is not uh, um, sort of uh, formalized uh, and, and, and sort of uh, crystallized in a clear definition. 
and, and again, we're working from a, a project-driven uh, uh, perspective, so very pragmatic, very operational. So for us, the idea of open project was to start to work as much as possible with open data, open source software, open code, open platform, open standard, and even open management tools. So an example, for if you go to the next uh, slide, what we started to do is to work, again, with municipal open data, a lot of them, uh, shift from uh, proprietary software to coding and using completely, doing the, the entire project with open source software. We, 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 we have become quite proficient in Python and, and QGIS, and we really are focusing on that because that, again, reduced the barrier uh, of access and use uh, to, with, with other users. And then uh, open code, again, we start to put our code on our GitHub account, and you will find it there. I'll show you an example. Uh, and, and, and release it with a MIT license, open license, which is quite a, a liberal and open license. Uh, we use GitHub as a platform for code development, open standards, uh, at least in terms of um, file format. That's the domain that we are trying. And then we start to uh, experiment with open management tool. Uh, Taiga is one. I'm sure there are other. But again, uh, keep the, 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 the progress and documentation on the, pro on the project management open as well. Um, next uh, slide. What are the example? Well, two. One is uh, in, in terms of data development, and the example is our open business repository that we are starting to compile. And again, this is very much work in progress. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the second example in a second. But let's start with uh, data development, how we can use this open idea project in, for, to, to, to develop database and to, to create a new, new database. So next slide. Uh, again, uh, the, the, just to reemphasize the point, this is very much about collaborative data creation. And the recognition that data is becoming a basic infrastructure, and many of the micro data uh, are essential infrastructure uh, addresses, uh, building, and, and, and maybe business location can be used by many stakeholders, and there are a very large range of applications. Um, so, the, 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 this, this characteristic makes the possibility of uh, 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 create the, the opportunity to, to partner uh, with different data and uh, different entities in the private and public sector. Uh, but again, uh, certainly also, or also private uh, sector. So we started a conversation with uh, uh, open addresses because we really uh, discovered this website. How many of you are uh, uh, aware of open addresses? So Open Addresses uh, is a website, and now it's actually a non-for-profit, uh, I, I learned, uh, that collects uh, addresses from authoritative uh, data sources across the globe. So the nice thing is that they, they, you know, they start to uh, think uh, in a global way, and uh, at this point they have uh, half a billion addresses across the globe. So if you Google Open Addresses, you will find... Uh, uh, their website, they have a GitHub with all the codes that they use, and uh, the database that you can download. For Canada, guess how many open addresses they put together from authoritative sources? Anybody has an idea? 11 million, roughly. And they're growing. <laughs> you know, how big is the um, address register of Statistics Canada? Roughly? 15 million. Roughly, I mean, I'm not an expert. So all the data are from authoritative data sources, not, not crowdsourced, it's not crowdsourcing data. It's from municipality and provinces that are putting the information out there. And this website and this group of people start to collaborate and put together addresses. And you can download the database in five minutes and recompile in maybe in an hour, and you have 11 million addresses for Canada, with, with a characteristic that we don't have as Stats Canada, the exact geolocation of the address. I'm going to show you an example. 
So again, it's, uh, it's data that you know, we also have in our infrastructure, but here is with uh, some additional characteristics, the coordinate of the address. So we were very inspired by this example and, and started to say, okay, maybe we can do something for businesses as well along this line. And that's what we started to do. Um, so the idea of all open project is really an enabler that you know, allows for this discussion and collaboration. Second example of collaboration uh, is with Microsoft. Now we have, I mean, we are a tiny little group, 10 people that you know, do crazy little things. But nevertheless, we, uh, through the, the crowdsourcing project and the network that we created, uh, we, we, we basically spread the information that we were collecting uh, data on uh, open building. And, uh, and Microsoft, the Bing uh, map team, reached out to us and saying that they, they were interested in uh, contributing to this idea of open uh, building data for Canada as well. Because, uh, well, probably many of you know, a couple of months ago, the Bing map team, Bing map team uh, put out uh, a database of 125 million building footprint, an open database for all of the US. If you, again, Google that, uh, just Google Microsoft 125 million building footprints, you will go to the website. And all the technology that they use to generate this, this building footprint is also on, their, on GitHub account. They use uh, satellite imaging process, processing. Um, so again, we, we had a couple of conference call and, and, and came to, the, to, to a small agreement for, for a collaboration. Again, no commitment made on, on their part, on our part, but there is the idea that we, they you know, will attempt to complement the database that we created uh, with the 4.3 million from uh, municipal sources with their technology and, and make it available to Canadian as open data. So again, that's, that's really the, the, the power of creating uh, collaborative data um, uh, um, partnership, I would say. So if we move to the next slide, uh, back to what we try to do with the business, uh, open uh, business register, is essentially mimic what open addresses did with, uh, with, with addresses. Uh, so we... First of all, very important point, this is an exploratory and experimental project. You know, this is work in progress at this point. So all the GitHub material is, part, is changing as uh, a gentleman was saying uh, this morning in the panel, you know, when you start to code on GitHub, you do that live, right? And, and that's exactly what we do. So we, we, I think we, are, we got a, a, a certain stage that we, are we run the, all the codes and we can generate the database. But we, again, we are working on that uh, constantly. So this is work in progress. Um, now the big difference uh, when compared to the to the building uh, database is that we are not here we are not providing a database we are providing a software that you can use to compile uh, the, the business information. So all the solution here is really a software. Again, it's on GitHub. You can download and run the software. Now, the idea is that at some point, maybe we will also provide a database. But the, the approach here is really uh, focusing on the, on the code and, and, uh, and the other database. Again, all the database are from authority, authoritative sources, government sources, and it's open microdata on, uh, database on business. How many of you uh, were aware of the fact that uh, Quebec uh, put the business register online as open data? That's probably part of that. And how many of you knew that? It's, it's online, it's there. Uh, if you search uh, Donnell Overt Quebec, and then you can uh, find the, the registers entreprise. Again, it's not the entire database, of course, but you have the name, the, the address of the business, the, the industry, and a few other characteristics of the business. So what we start to do is to uh, write the Python script to, to compile uh, this, um, this database. Uh, and, and integrate the various sources. So I'm going to show you with the next slide. There you go. <laughs> and that's, that's the idea of the open business uh, register. I love this uh, little drawing. It was done by the, 
by our our developer, um, which was a, a co-op student, by the way, and did, did a fantastic job, Maxime. And then he came up with this great uh, drawing that basically is the idea of the uh, of the business repository. So the idea is very simple. We, we from the internet we download the various uh, database, and in in the in the ideal final vision and version we should be able to run the code and automatically pull the, the data from the internet. In this, uh, in this version that you would find um, on the GitHub, you still have to download the database, put them in a repository in your computer. And then uh, there is one key component that I'm going to show you, and you can help us on that, which is the source file. This is the source file. This is the file that map the, the, the information uh, from the original data sources to our database. So it's basically a translation of the various field in a standardized form. So we take all the, uh, each municipal database would, would uh, call the field uh, business name in a different way. Sometimes it's business name, business dash name, uh, business name, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to standardize all of that and we wrote the source file for that. Uh, after that, there is all the data processing uh, phase, which is basically, again, Python code that recompiles all the, all the pieces in database uh, and re-standardize each original data set in a CSV format. We still have to work on the cleaning part and, and, and filtering uh, and possible imputation. So at this point, the final database uh, certainly, there are certainly duplication in the final database of, of the, for, the, for the business. On, on, the, on the building side, we did a lot of data cleaning. On this, is still rough. And then the idea is that this could go, we, we would generate a clean data set that could go on a local SQL server and again, make, possibly made available again on the internet for, for download. If you click uh, on this link, you go to the GitHub repository with all the code for this. Now, of course, I wanted to do a very interactive uh, session with you writing code, but unfortunately, I cannot do that uh, because of technology. No, I'm kidding. So I'm just going to show you a couple of examples and to give you a sense of how the system works. Again, if you, if you open the GitHub page, Uh, maybe any question at this point? <laughs> any curiosity, anything that you want to? Yes, there is a gentleman there. I, I can, but maybe... I'm curious about when you uh, accept data from the public, like on the, uh, the price of uh, weed or price of anything. Maybe it's more of a statistical question, but before you present that data, yeah. do you consider what volume of data would be considered statistically significant to be meaningful before yeah. presenting it, or do you just simply display what, how, whatever little has been entered? I think, again, I'm not the person that uh, developed the, the, the um, sort of analytical part. Uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure there is some basic data cleaning to uh, drop uh, outliers or data that are clearly uh, not realistic. So there is some, some very basic uh, standardization, like three standard deviation from the mean. Again, uh, yeah, okay. I can provide more information on this, but I think uh, there is a, a basic level of uh, filtering and cleaning. Okay, thanks. Yeah. You can try. You can enter, uh, you know, $200 per gram, or I don't know, something, I, I have no idea. And then you, you can see if the day after is there, or uh, there is a, data, a time lag of two days. <laughs> but anyway, I think there is a basic uh, cleanup. Uh, and again, there was a lot of debate about the quality of the data and what, uh, but you know, given the circumstances, that was one option for gathering some information. And of course, it will be pondered and, and, and assessed together with many other data sources. Yeah. All right, I'm John Wiener, OpenStreetMap. What I'm interested in is who can use this stuff. You've spoken about a researcher from Italy. 
I know the Treasury Board have been working with Open Standards on some, with some African countries. If you're telling me all the source and things, et cetera, is available, um, are you getting funding from, who's it, external affairs or? Uh... No. Um, so, again, uh, the, of course, the OSM data can be used by anybody. It's on an OSM platform, and anybody can download uh, the data that is on, on, on OSM. For the database that we uh, created, uh, again, the, 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 for the business repository, the, the code is there. We, again, I'll show you in a second. Uh, you can find the instruction on how to run the code. We wrote some documentation, and again, it's work in progress. On the building, uh, we hope to make it available soon. Again, it's, there's a process of uh, uh, review and, and briefing in, in internal, but again, the, the expectation is that this will be at some point soon available to, to anybody for download. Uh, the project is, uh, is self-funded in the sense that well, we are a cost recovery division. We have some money to, to, to uh, do some development. But that's, a, that's maybe that's a very good question in the sense that, uh, you know, there is often the idea is open data, is open source, it's, all, it's free. No, it's not. It's not. There is a cost in developing this. <laughs> there is a cost in, 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 in mainly in the in time of the analyst and, and, and putting together the database. So further development would certainly require more, uh, more, uh, more funding. Hi, uh, Daniel Bice, Health Canada. I'm going to ask a very selfish question. Uh, using the OpenStreetMap database, how easy would it be to answer questions like, where are all the hospitals and how many Canadians do each one of them serve? Are they linked to census tracts? Very, very good. Um, oh. Did I touch something? Okay. That's a very good question. I will uh, get to that question, if you don't mind, in a second, because my second example is about an analysis with, with, uh, with open data, and it's actually sort of addressing this, this type of information. So uh, just if you are patient, I'll get back to that in a... I'm not, but I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So again, the question was about uh, uh, using this data for uh, accessibility measure or for... Uh, for uh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, again, I'll, I'll show you an example of what we are doing now, and I think it goes exactly in that direction. Uh, okay, I have the, the repository here. Uh, okay, w the point that I want to stress once again is that this is uh, experimental, exploratory, and open, and an, an experimental, exploratory, open project. It's work in progress. It works. So all the code uh, that you would find here, you can download, clone the repository, run it, and it would generate a database uh, of uh, 1.3 million buildings record. Uh, sorry, business uh, records. Which again, it's, it's not a small, uh, small uh, database. So it's, it's, it's something, something quite significant given the amount of uh, the number of businesses that we have in Canada. Uh, which again, depending on how you count them, you know, it could be 1.4, 2. Point something million, depending on employer, non-employer businesses. But again, it's a, it's a good chunk and. Uh, and the reason is because there are big uh, data set like the, the Quebec uh, register. Now, the, the, what I want to show you, if you can just click on source here, uh, here you will find all the sources that we used and the link to the original database. Uh, so as you can, okay, hold on, just go on the top. You will see that, uh, again, there are some federal database, the money services. It's a, it's a database that you can find on Open Canada. Uh, there are some provincial databases, the BC Indigenous uh, uh, Register. Uh, and then there are, uh, again, the, the province of Quebec has the, the Open uh, Business Register. There are a bunch of municipalities that started to put out uh, business license database with the micro database. If you are curious about the, the the um, timeliness, the quality of this database, check the Vancouver one, uh, the Vancouver database. They claim uh, on the web page that they, they, they update the database daily. 
I mean, you cannot beat that in terms of uh, timeliness of, uh, of, uh, of the database. So the annual database is updated daily, and then they do monthly update for the previous two years. So, and they have data for the past 10 years, if I remember correctly. So it's just in, in BC. Uh, for Vancouver, you have, I think, uh, half a million records of businesses, and a lot of analysis that you can do. And you have the address. I'm going to show you something in a second. Uh, you have the name of the business, you have uh, the, the type of business, and you have the number of employees on the business. It's, it's, okay, it's a rough, maybe, estimate, but you have a sense of the size of the business. Again, a lot of information. Some of the database, like the BC uh, Indigenous database, also have personal record. They have the name of the owner of the business. So again, a variety of different uh, pieces of information. So again, you can check out the sources. Then if you go back um, and you open, okay, and the docs, I'm not going to go through all the, all the pieces, but here you would find all the, all the documentation on how to run the database. Go back, go, I'm almost done. Uh, I just wanted to show you source. Okay, here are all the source files, the file that maps the, the um, uh, municipal or provincial database to our standardized and uh, um, homogenized database. Uh, so if you click on uh, any of that, BC, I don't know, just to open one, just click on one, they are divided by city. So that's how you can contribute to this project. I mean, you can, of course, download it. But if you find a database that is not here, and if you want to contribute to that exactly, or using the same principle of open addresses, you can, you can write a source code, let us know about the source, write the source code, and that is the file name. Uh, well, ideally in the final version, we would have a URL here that would pull the data from the internet. And then you have the various in, uh, business name, in this case it was called name, a business number, uh, those are the, the variables that we could map to our standardized database. Again, that's very simple. And then there will be a Python code that compiles all of these together and generates a final database. Going back to the, going back to the presentation, and I'm almost done. Yep. So, next slide. There you go. We have 1.3 million records. It's, again, it's not clean. There is some duplication because there are municipalities in Quebec and we got the Quebec register. Uh, most of the records are in Quebec and Ontario, either from BC. 90% of name and address or, or both, right? So next, again, uh, open code means everybody can use and you can use and contribute uh, or suggest new data sources. Next. Uh, the second example, very quickly, uh, data integration analysis, an example on proximity measures. So, so far I, I, I told you about data development. Why are we doing all of this? And why working on open space, an open project is, uh, is, is really interesting for us and potentially very interesting for you? We are uh, doing a major project. Again, we're, every year we do about 20 projects. One of the big projects we are doing this year is about developing proximity measure at the very local level. Ideally, at the, at the building level, have a proximity to amenities, to different services at the building level. Can we do this? Well, yes, no, maybe. We could start testing, experimenting the idea with some open data. And I'll show you how. So the concept is very simple. If you go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, imagine you have a, you know, a neighborhood, and those are all the streets, and you have... Uh, this is one building and this is the address of one building. And you want to do, next slide, uh, measure the proximity to all the, um, let's say, grocery store, right? Hospital, all the hospital or uh, uh, whatever, civic center in the neighborhood. So the idea, the conceptual model that we are developing is just, next slide, take a certain radius and look at all the amenities that are in that radius. Next slide, calculate a distance, can be walking distance, can be driving distance, etc. Well, we're still working on that, and develop a sim simple uh, measure using the, the idea of a gravity model. We divide the size 
that can be the total revenue of this amenity, can be the total number of hospital beds, etc., divided by the distance to access that. So all of this can be done in principle. Can we actually do that or experiment that with open data? Next slide. I think we can. What we are doing now is really to, to we are very cognizant of the fact that eventually we will have to use uh, some of the, our statistical infrastructure, our statistics kind of the business register. It's, probably, it's not possible to do all, all of that with open data. But the development of the, of the, of the model and uh, the conceptual development and testing could be done so, with open data in a completely open space, open project. And that would facilitate our work with our client in terms of developing the model, sharing the data, etc. Because it's all open data. That's what we are trying to do. So Vancouver, open data, Python, QGIS, software, completely open source. Anybody can use it. Uh, Dale, open code. That's the code that we are trying to develop. And GitHub, that's the place where we are hoping to develop this. Just to give you an example, next slide. This is the building footprint of Vancouver. Right, uh, you have all the building footprint for, for, the, for Vancouver. Next slide, you can add the addresses. You have all the addresses. Next slide, you have all the business locations. As I was saying, the, the, the database is updated daily. So there's <laughs> we would not be able to, to do any better than that. So just to give you a sense of the accuracy of the, of the geolocation of this information, here is a zoom in, and here is the uh, building footprint with the addresses. As you can see, and we check, again, we did random check, within, but the, the accuracy seems to be very high in terms of geolocation. That's what we observe for other municipalities as well. So, of course, there are dots that are not pointing to any building, but, you know, few of them. Most of the dots are right, the address is right on the building. Next slide. There you go. The red is the businesses. So you have all the business location. You know the type of business, the size of the business, exactly the conceptual model that we are trying to develop, the, the type of uh, work that we are trying to do. Next slide. Yeah, you can also select one type of business. Here is food-related food business, right? So if you want to develop uh, a measure of accessibility, proximity to retail, uh, food retail, grocery, there you go. We have all the data completely open and we can develop the, the, and test the model completely on open space on GitHub with Python code and that's exactly what we're trying to do and we hope to do with you <laughs> as well. So next, of course there are challenges and I'm closing here. I uh, still have about three minutes. Um, coverage of open microdata, it's not perfect but you know, we hope uh, to be able to work with you guys and with the many municipality and encourage everybody to put out uh, data. So far we work only with open data, meaning open data coming with an open data license, right? Check the website of uh, ISED, uh, Aboriginal Affairs, ESDC, look at the quantity of uh, business record data that are in databases on their website that are not open data. If we could encourage this department to release this data as open data instead of web scraping this information, you know, that, that would be a major win-win uh, situation. There are, of course, issues in terms of uh, governance and license. I didn't go in detail on that. We are not experts. We are working with our uh, I am the Information Management Division that will help us on this. And of course, for us, it's an heterogeneity, heterogeneity, heterogeneity of formats and concepts and, and definition is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity because really Stats Canada, you know, in, in this space can become a steward and, and improve the, the standardization and homogenization of uh, municipal open data. And this could be a major role that we can play. And I think I'm done with the next uh, slide. So again, that, those are my take-home messages, really. Uh, different option for user and integrate open data. We can go with the database, we can go with the, with the, um, with the, with the software that just does that for you. Or we can collaborate with major initiatives that are already out there, open, uh, open addresses, right? Fantastic initiative, half a billion. Uh, uh, data point. Uh, there are so uh, great opportunities for integrating municipal microdata, uh, open data, 
building business, and then there is much more than that. There are, there are property value, uh, uh, parcels, etc., provided with an open data license. And great opportunity to work in an open, uh, with an open project approach, so using open tool and completely an open space. And you can contribute and develop and reuse, of course. That's really what we hope to, to achieve with, with this presentation communication, make the point that, again, we can work together. Uh, I think that's all. If you want more information, next slide. Those are our uh, contacts. I forgot to mention that uh, Harris uh, is here. He's one of the, one of the team members that actually work on the development uh, of, the, of the business repository. Uh, I just supervise. I, I, I pretend, but I, in fact, <laughs> all the hard work is done by great uh, developer and analyst. Um, Jean is working on the building database, and uh, you can contact us, and we hope to be able to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. I just want to say.